Hello Magical Hands and welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, hi, my name is Jessica. Please do not make it your last time of seeing this channel by hitting on the subscribe button. Also, endeavor to like this video if you turn out to like the result of it. Now, in today's tutorial, we are going to be making a simple corporate trouser with the permanent ghetto line. Likewise, this trouser is going to have a fly zipper and it's also going to have a side pocket. Everything packed in one. If it's something you're interested in learning, make sure to keep on watching. Without any further ado, let's get into the video proper. For my fabric, I have exactly two yards of this thick crepe. This crepe is very, very thick, not lightweight, and I really love this crepe here. So I folded it up and I'm going to start marking. I just made sure that the part where I have the two separate pieces is placed right there. Now I'm going to start marking three inches. You can mark four inches. You can mark five inches. Just know that the bigger the size, the more inches you should add. After which you connect all these lines together to form a straight line just as seen. On the top part, I'm going to mark half an inch, which is going to be the allowance for joining the main trouser to the waistband. Now I placed two inches on that waistband, on that line outside, and then I marked to my hip line, which I'm using nine inches. So the two inches I placed outside is for my waistband. So I'll go back and I'll place my tape outside like that again and i'll mark to my crotch line of which i usually use 11 inches if you don't know how to take your crotch line just make sure you're wearing a trouser in which you like the fitting of the trouser just as seen in this video and then mark from your waist to that point and that would be your crotch line so the next line i'm going to mark is the full length of this trouser and i used um 46 inches for the full length 46 inches includes my sewing allowance that's for hemming the base of the trouser make sure to add enough to the full length so that if the trouser is too long you'll be the one reducing from it now that we have the basic points right on that point there which is the starting line i'll mark my exact waist measurement divide by four so now my dart line is usually four inches and if you don't know how to take your dart line you can just use your apex measurement, which is your nipple to nipple measurement divided by two, which is the same determinant for that we use for the top of our blouse. So after I've marked my dart, I marked downwards four inches and I'll connect a straight line just as seen. On that dart line, I'm going to mark half an inch on both sides of that dart line. And then I will connect it in a slanted form to meet the base of four inches that I have right there. And this is exactly what my dart should look like. So now, since I'll be sewing up the dart, I'm going to take that measurement and replace it on the other side. So now I have my exact measurement. On the hip line, I'll take my hip measurement divide by four and I'll mark it right there. And then I'll bring that same hip measurement to the crotch line and I'll connect all those lines first of all. My hip measurement divided by 4 is 10.5. 10.5 divided by 4 again gives me 6.625 and that is going to be my crotch depth. I will go ahead and I will mark 2.625 outside of this line and that is how my crotch depth will be. Now I will go ahead and I will connect a curve from this crotch depth to meet the hip line just as seen. And there we have it. Most people like to call this the flap. Now we are going to mark the midpoint of the trouser so that will enable us to take our ties measurement. Now our crotch line is the longest measurement we have here. So I have um, 13 inches there and I'll find the midpoint of 13 inches, sorry, 13.5 inches. And then I'll just mark it and then use that as a guide to mark a straight line to the full length. That way I have marked the midpoint. Now I marked downwards 4 inches from that crotch line so that I can be able to apply my ties measurement. So my round tie measurement is 25 and 25 divided by 2 gives me 12.5. Now on that 12.5, I'll mark the midpoint of 12.5 which is 6.2 something there and I'll make sure that 6.2 something is placed on that midpoint line and then I will mark what I have on this side and then on the other side I'll mark the 12.5. That way I have evenly divided the lap measurement so everything is accurate. So now that I've marked it and I've taken my size just so it has a good fit, I will go ahead and just blend this line into the full length. You can start to bring the line straight down or you can start to still slant it inwards. So long as you're not taking your exact knee measurement or your exact um, ankle measurement, it's going to still be free. 
so afterwards i started adding half an inch all around which is going to be my sewing allowance and then i'll proceed to cut this out So along my dart, I made sure to notch it. So now I'm going to place my remaining piece of fabric into two and I'll place the front piece on it just as seen. So if you recall vividly, our sewing allowance and our dart is already on this front piece. So we're only going to redefine the back piece. So the first thing I did was to re-extend it, the crotch line, by that same 2.625 that we used to mark the front crotch line. Along the center back, which is right there, I marked one inch upwards and I'll connect it in a slanted form to meet the waistline at the other side. So this one inch that I marked up is because it's the back piece, you know, the center back. And because of the bump that we have there, it's advisable for the center back to be higher than the other parts. So now I'm going to redefine this now that we have the new waistline of the back piece. I'm marking what 1.5 inch. I'm just going to zoom in so we have a closer view. I marked inwards 1.5 inch. And then I'm going to connect a curve from that 1.5 inch to meet the crotch line that we have there. So the reason why I did not use my use two inches because if you've seen my previous video i usually mark it was two inches the reason why i did not use two inches is because i don't have that much fabric left so i have to just be careful with my measurements so now i'm going to re-extend or i'm going to re-blend this crotch extension into the full length just as seen and then i'm going to readjust the trouser to this new waistline that we have and i'll go ahead and trace out the remaining bodies of the trouser to blend in so you can go ahead and start cutting this out this is basically the only difference between the front piece and the back piece this way your trouser is going to relax properly also if you if you don't have a um, bomb if you don't have if your back is flat if you don't have anything there and you don't see the need of redefining your crotch line it is still fine it does not mean your trouser will not come out well but this will allow it sit properly so i have put my front and my back trouser here and i'll start working with the back piece the first thing I will do is I will make sure that it is placed right face facing each other. I have the two pieces of the back piece here and I'm going to sew along that crotch line or the flap. After sewing it up, I'm going to take my time and open up the seams, iron it properly because this thick fabric, this thick crepe does not relax fast. So now I'll go ahead and sew up the darts on the back piece. Remember that the allowance of the darts was already on the back piece while we're cutting it so i'll go and sew up the dart i just went ahead to redraw the line so that it is visible so the easiest way i sew my dart is i'll take my time to make sure that that line is straight and once i'm getting close to the edge i will tighten the stitch so i don't get to back stitch and it should look as clean and sharp as this after we are done with the dart we'll definitely iron it down this is what it looks like and we are going to iron it making sure that the dart is facing the center line of the trouser so after i've prepped the back piece of the trouser i'm going to fold this up and i'll keep it aside so now i'm going to move over to my front piece i have this piece of fabric here and the first thing we are going to do is to start cutting the fly zipper so i'll just take out this piece of fabric and i'm going to Mark the length of my fly zipper of which I'm going to use 6 inches and then for the width I marked 4 inches. So I'll go ahead and cut this out and then I'll cut another piece of this again because I'll need two. One will be for the fly and the other will be for the zip cover. So now I'll fold up this band that we cut and I'm going to iron it down. I'll fold up both of them and I'll probably iron it down. So after iron it down, ironing it down, I went ahead to create a curve along one of the band. And the one which I created a curve along it is going to be the fly and the other is going to be the cover. So now I'll bring back my front pieces and this is the zip I will use. This is the closest shade of brown zip that I have with me. And since it's a fly zipper, not to worry, it's not going to show. So now I'm going to start fixing the fly to the trouser itself. I'll place the fly right face facing the right face of my left trouser and i'm going to sew up as seen this is what it looks like after sewing it up and now i'm going to iron this down 
Now I'll place my zip and I'll make sure that the good face of the zip is facing the fly zipper. Okay, make sure the good face is facing it. And then I'll place it like this, just exactly as seen. And then I'm going to sew along the edge of the zip at that side, just as seen. So this is a closer view of what the zip looks like after I've sewn it up. So I'll just open up the zip now so you will understand. Yes, and then the other side of the zip will be attached to the other side of the trouser. So now I'm going to now fold this whole fly inside and once I fold it inside, I'm going to properly iron this down. Next, I will flip the trouser to the wrong face and then I'm going to sew along the edge of that fly. So now I'm going to place it as seen and I'll place the other piece of the trouser on the zip. I'll just place it with close to the edge of the zip and I'll sew it up just as seen. And then I'll bring the zip cover and I'll place it underneath it. This is just going to cover the whole zip situation from inside. And just exactly as seen, I'm going to sew all these three pieces that I'm holding together as seen. After sewing it up, this is what it looks like. And this is a closer view of what it looks like i went ahead and i just stop stitch which is totally optional now i'm going to go ahead and join the remaining parts of the crotch together so i forgot to record this part but i'm just going to mention it you see where the fly ends where the part of the trouser where the fly ends in case you want to join the two trouser pieces together you are going to have some difficulties at that part so what you are going to do is to notch so that the fabric can lay out well so you can be able to join to the other piece i didn't record it but i hope this voice note does justice to that now for the front start we are not going to sew the front start downwards we are just going to close it up just so this is a closer view of the darts remember i notched it earlier so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold this side and i'll place it to meet the other that we are just going to fold it up so you can have this thing it's just going to have this type of look here so you are going to do it like this and make sure that it's facing outside make sure it's not facing inside or make sure it's not facing the zip direction so i'm just going to hold this down i'm just going to sew a little to hold it down so it can stay in one place next we'll iron down the dart so it can have that folded line remember we are not sewing the darts we are just going to iron it down so it has that folded line Next, we are going to create that ghetto line and you can just fold this down and iron down. But I decided to make mine have a permanent line. I think that gave these pants a very nice fitting. So I'm just going to show you how to go about it. You are going to fold up your trouser, just place them as seen. And then you fold the trouser into two equal pieces. After which we will define that line with the iron so that we can know that that is the midpoint. And then this is what it looks like you can see how visible that ironed line is looking like right so just make sure it is close to the dart but not exactly on the dart i'm just going to adjust this one while i'm sewing it so this is what it looks like and i'll go ahead and sew it so i'll hold it up and i'm going to sew very tiny remember we did not add any allowance for this ghetto line so you are just going to take your time and sew very very tiny so the reason i'm sewing is because this is going to give it a permanent you know ghetto line is not going to move it's going to be permanent after which this is what it's going to look like and then you take your time to iron it down next we'll move on to the last detail which is going to be the side pocket so i'll bring out the remaining piece of fabric i have here and i'm going to cut out a rectangle and i'll just put the measurements on the screen so for the rectangle I cut, I cut four separate pieces, four different pieces, two for one side pocket, two for the other side pocket. So we'll start with one of the side pockets. I'll keep the other side, uh, bands or the rectangle aside and I'll place the rectangle underneath two of it. I'll place it underneath the trouser, one of the side of the trouser. I'll first of all trim this to match with the shape of the trouser. After which I'll raise the trouser up, I'll remove one side of the pocket and keep aside and then I'll place the trouser back. So now I'm going to mark inwards along the top part of the trouser. I'm going to mark inwards 3 inches 
and then i'm going to mark downwards which should be enough to accommodate my hand don't forget that half an inch on the top part is going to be the sewing allowance so i marked downwards six inches and then i'll connect a curve from the trouser i'll connect a nice curve to meet those two points i just connect the, connect them together and then i'll cut this out make sure you are, you are not cutting exactly on the line make sure you leave like half an inch for sewing allowance so now i'll bring back that pocket and i'll place it right face facing the trouser and i'll sew along after which you should have something that looks like this also you can notch this curved area so that it relaxes properly when you flip it over after sewing it up i'm going to turn the pocket piece inside and i'll give this a really good press Now we'll bring back that second piece that we kept aside and we'll place it up so that the whole trouser piece is complete again. So I'll flip everything to the wrong face and I'm going to sew only the pockets together. I'll just sew only the pockets. So this is what it looks like. I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side of the pocket as well. So now both the pockets are ready. The front piece of the trouser is ready and now we can start joining with the back piece. I'll place the good face of the back piece and I'll place it to face the good face of the front piece. Just take your time and arrange it properly. And then we are going to sew up the sewing allowance that we added earlier. So this is what the sewing process looks like. I made sure that as I'm sewing, when I get to the pocket area, I know you'll be wondering, am I sewing the pocket together or I'm lifting it up? Definitely I'm sewing the pocket together and I'm only going to sew exactly on the pocket allowance. I'm just going to sew everything down together and that's how I'll join the other side as well. So now that I've finished, I'm going to join the crotch line together. I'll place it right face facing each other. I'll just make sure that that crotch line is placed together and then I'm going to sew up. So if your measurements were accurate while you were taking everything, you see that the length of everything will be equal. No one should be longer than the other. So just go ahead and sew it up and this is what it looks like we are coming close to the end of this video if you've watched to this point and you've not subscribed yet please do also hit the subscribe button make sure to like make sure to share and also turn on post notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new tutorial here so next thing we are going to focus on is going to be the waistband and we are going to take the waist measurement of the trouser not your exact waist measurement because this time around the fly zip and the zip cover is already included into it so we'll have to take the waist of the trouser itself So I had 34 inches along that band, but before I mark it, I'm going to make sure that I mark half an inch first as seen. And then I'm going to, from that half an inch, I'm going to now mark my waistband measurement, which stops right here. And then where it stops, I'm still going to mark um, my half inch sewing allowance at that point. So you know, my waistband, remember I left two inches for the waistband. My waistband is supposed to be five inches long. By the time I fold five inches into two, it will become two and a half inches. Then you use the half inch to join to the half inch on the trouser. But my fabric was limited, you guys. So my waistband became smaller. But regardless, it still did not affect the fitting. But just in case, so you know, this was not the supposed waistband of this. So now I'm going to fold this down just as seen. And after folding it down, I'm going to open it up and then I'll fold half an inch on only one side. I'll just take my time and do this to the end. I'll take my band to my sewing machine and I'm going to place it just as seen. Make sure that that folded side is folded like this. And then I'll sew up that half an inch sewing allowance. And then I'll flip it to the good face and it should look exactly like this. I'll do the same thing to the other end of the band. I'll keep the band aside and I'll take out this piece of fabric that I have here. It's just one inch wide, nothing much. And I'm just going to sew. This is going to be my belt holder or yes, belt holder. And I'm just going to sew it up as seen. After sewing it, I'm going to trim off some of the allowance. And with the help of this pin, I'm going to pass this, I'm going to flip the this little strap that I have here. I'll flip it over to the good face. 
we should look exactly like this so you are going to iron it such that this center line this sewing line is going to be placed at the center this is how you're going to iron it down now i'll start cutting down some inches from this that i'm going to use to attach you know just cut i just cut like three inches of which i later reduced because it became longer than my band so now i'm going to now take these tiny straps that i cut i will first of all place one just as seen on the front dart and i'm next one i'm going to place would be on the second front dart the next one i placed it along the side seams just as seen and then i also placed one on the center back line i did not place any on the dart of the back piece but that does not mean you cannot if you want to depending on what you want so now i can go ahead and start attaching my band after i have pinned these straps to it so this is exactly how i'll be sewing the band i'll place the band good face that is right face facing the trouser and i will sew that half an inch first of four we should look like this just make sure it is equally placed with that zip um cover is the zip cover there i'll just place it like just make sure that the folded side is still folded in and then you sew up that other part so now i'm going to push everything inside and i'll make sure that that folded side is going to now be placed down so this way it is easy for me to top stitch so after attaching the band i'm going to definitely fix a button at that front there but this is just a close view so for this remaining belt holder what i did was to just use my hand to complete the sewing upward i did a, like a hand sewing to complete the sewing upwards and this is what the fitting is looking like so far i hope you learned something new in this tutorial if you did make sure to subscribe don't forget to share this video don't forget to like sharing this video is going to help you to recommend this channel to other people and see you in my next video bye